This is the Legacy of Leaders series, and I'm your host, John Heyman, and I'm very excited about my guest today. He is the son of one of the best football players the Jacksonville Jaguars ever had, and a good friend of mine, Lonnie Martz. But with me today is his son, Gavin Martz, from their nonprofit called Level the Playing Field LA. So, Gavin, help me understand what the LA is. Level the Playing Field LA. Go ahead. Of course. So, the LA stands for Leadership Academy. And what we're trying to do is empower boys to become leaders in their community. We want to start with the boy so that the boy can build up the family mm. and the family can build up the community and the community can then begin to thrive. That's a fantastic formula. <laughs> I love that. It's yes, simple sir. and simple to understand. Build up the boy, build up the family, build up the community. That yes, makes sir. perfect, perfect sense. How long has your dad been doing this? So it's been about three years. COVID came in 2020. so. It set us back a little bit, but we took on the first cohort in 2021. We're looking to do about 10 to 15 boys every year. And we skipped last year because we wanted to really have the mentors build those intimate relationships and start to build up on those with that foundation that they've built over the past couple of years. Yeah. And then now we're looking to bring on another 15 boys this coming summer. So Gavin, once a mentor is matched with one of your boys, one of the students, uh, do they follow them all the way through school? Oh, 100%. That mentor stays with that same child. So yes, you sir. need new mentors, don't you? Yes, sir, 100%. Okay, so how many do you need right now? We can take as many as we can get. Okay, so if you had more, you could enroll more kids in your program. Yes, sir. Leadership Academy. Yes, sir. Tell me what you teach the young men. So what we look to teach them, we really want to expose them to new experiences that they wouldn't get in life because we're focused on underserved communities, primarily the 32209 area code. Yep. And so what we want to do is expose them to things that they haven't seen before. And so we'll teach things like surfing. We had a mm. surf camp this past summer. A lot of those boys have never been to the beach and never seen the beach. Yep. Or this past weekend, we did a camping trip. And so they got to go out to Hannah Park and see mm -hmm. what it's like to camp on a site, how to make a Overnight? fire. Yes, sir. Very cool. You didn't invite Friday me. Friday to Sunday. <laughs> Those are we'll, we'll make sure activities. we get that invite to you next, yeah. next time. Yeah. Surfing. Sir. Can you surf? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I can stand up. I okay, stand that's up. about all I can but do. You yeah. know, that, that's it's the effort that counts. Yeah. So. The, the kids do it, though? The, oh, the students do it? It's crazy how fast they'll catch on to things yeah, like yeah. that after not being out of the beach or not being able to swim. Yeah. But wow. you can surf. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. And obviously, life jackets and also if they fall off, they pop back yeah, up. They yeah, they don't take them in deep water. They'll catch those waves that are more at the shoreline, but okay. they, right. they love it. You should see how tired they are after <laughs> they finish because at the start of the day, it's hoorah, hoorah, yeah. yelling and screaming. And then towards the end, you'll see kids just laying on the beach on their <laughs> boards, just tired. Where's out. dinner? Yeah. 100%. That is really cool. Yes, so you sir. do stuff out at the beach. Uh, anything else you do? So we actually do a course called Way of the Gentleman. And so we teach them just basic etiquette training, mm -hmm. how to dress business casual, business professional, how to eat at a formal dinner, or how to tie a tie, just simple things like that, that these kids, these fatherless boys, don't have somebody in their house to teach them. And then my sister, actually, Jalan, she does mental wellness training with the mm. boys just to focus on that aspect that's not really talked about yep. just for males in general. Yep. And so just allowing them to have a space where they can really open up and be vulnerable and be vulnerable with each other because we know as men that's not something that gets to get talked about a lot. Yep. And so just seeing that and seeing the boys do that, it's incredible. Yeah. So you have about 15 kids in it right now yes. from different high schools, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. Right. Which high schools? So honestly, all of them are middle school at the moment, middle except school. Okay. for a few. There's one at, let's, I think he's at Reigns right okay. now. And then there's another one who's at River City Science Academy. So that's a good school. So are some, most of them coming from Butler or Northwestern? Um, I'm not actually you know, sure. sure which, yeah. Yeah, I'm not That's sure okay. which, which area they're coming from. Yeah, but. so you have about 15. They need mentors, yes, sir. as you heard already. Do you put the mentors through training as well? Oh, yeah, 100%. The mentors have to go through screenings. They have to go through background checks, and then they've got to go through an interview with the mentor onboarding team, and then they've got to do their trainings, and then the trainings allow them to get paired up with the mentee that the board sees fit to pair them with. Yep. 
And can the boy turn down the mentee? The, uh, excuse me, the mentor if you know, for some reason it just doesn't fit? Yeah, the boys obviously have a say in who's their mentor okay. as well because they have preferences. And if a boy doesn't really mess with the mentor or they just yeah. don't get that connection that other boys are getting with their mentors, then we'll look to place them with a new mentor. How often do the mentors meet with the boys? So most of the time we have the mentors at the meetings every single time we meet. Okay. Obviously the mentors have lives as well and they have obligations. So anytime that they're not there, they're tending to another part of their life that requires their attention. Yeah, but that makes I'm sense. sure if they could be there all the time, they would be there mm. all the time. You have an amazing group of volunteers, they're not paid, volunteers meeting with these boys who desperately needs a uh, male role model. Am yes, I correct? Sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, and what kind of results have you had? Do you measure results in a certain way, like lack of behavior problems, things like that? So our biggest thing is we just do self, self-made self surveys. And so we get to see the boys' interests, their dislikes, how they felt about certain things. Mm -hmm. And so getting a chance to see how they've developed over the course of time. I know for me, at first, when they started coding, it was like mind-boggling to them. But now that they've had more sessions and more times to get it under their belt, there's so many of them are like, oh, I want to develop games. I want to learn how to code. I want to get into cybersecurity. I want to do mm. things in IT. And so we see that. We see those behaviors. We see those interests start to change. And it's just amazing to see. That's really cool. Well, your dad has been a friend for a while to me. Sure. So you need to say hello to him. 100%. He was w one of the star players during one of the wonderful years yes. back then. I mean, it looks sure. like we're having a great year this year 100%. too, which is fantastic. To so it. ladies and gentlemen, I've had the pleasure of um, interviewing Gavin Martz, the son of Lonnie Martz, one of the um, players for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the days gone by. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This is Legacy of Leaders series. I'm your host, John Heyman. Have a wonderful day.